Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome uh, to Free Write Friday. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jessica Lynn Johnson. I am the founder and CEO of Soaring Solo Studios. Um, Soaring Solo is a company dedicated to the direction and development of one person plays. So I have the honor and privilege of working with solo artists all day, every day. Um, from all over the globe. I work with people um, in Los Angeles, Florida, Canada, Africa, New York City. I mean, you name it. I, I have clients everywhere who I, who I have the joy of working with and help to tell their story from stage and in the new world, also virtually. <laughs> um, let's see, I've uh, helped to direct and develop well over 100 solo shows, probably more like 150 at this point. Um, I've toured internationally with both of my own solo shows, so I'm a solo artist myself. I am on the advisory board with the Los Angeles Women's Theater Festival and um, a screening panelist for them as well. I look at the submissions. Um, I'm a blogger for NoHo Arts, so I write all about uh, solo theater in my Soaring Solo article on NoHo Arts. You can also find me there. And yeah, that's a little bit about me. I'd love to hear about you. So please say in the chat um, your name, where you're tuning in from, um, and a little bit about where you're at in your own personal solo theater journey. If you're at the beginning stages, if you're further along, if you've been touring, if you don't even know if this is for you and you're just curious, wherever, wherever you're at in your process, I'd love to hear it. So please say hi in the chat. Um, the mission of Free Write Friday is really just to create a space where uh, we have supportive community, where we are exploring the structure of solo theater. Um, and I will always provide both a lecture component as well as a writing prompt so that you can free write and create your solo show one free write at a time. And if you miss any of the Free Write Fridays, you can always go to my YouTube channel, Soaring Solo LLC, and you can catch up on all of the videos there. I have over a hundred videos um, of tutorials and isolate, meditate, create sessions, which is where I infuse um, meditation and visualization to help you write, and a whole slew of other um, helpful videos on my YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out as well. And if you enjoy today and you wanna come back next time, I'm just gonna be taking um, some time off for Labor Day and a long weekend, but I will be resuming on Friday, September 10th. So Friday, September 10th is the next Free Write Friday that's happening at 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, noon Central, 1 p.m. Eastern. So go ahead and mark your calendar and RSVP through the website, just like you did today to get the Zoom link. A um, little bit of housekeeping, if you are doing anything distracting, I would ask that you turn your camera off or don't be distracting, <laughs> one of the two. Um, please have something nearby you to write with and write on or type on is fine as well. And um, let me see, let me see, just making sure I'm getting through all the housekeeping stuff. Yeah, and also I should state that this space is really meant for just again, lecture and writing. Um, the whole thing should take 20 to 30 minutes. It's pretty short and sweet, um, but it's not a place where I go through answering questions or we share our work or anything like that. Um, that's really more reserved for either private coaching with me, or I have free Saturday morning classes, um, usually about once or maybe twice a month. So you can go under free stuff on my website and sign up for my free class. And that's the place where you can really share your work, ask questions, that sort of thing. Um, and always feel free to email me at soaringsoloartist at gmail.com um, for more information about anything I mentioned today. Um, and I also wanna express, I had mentioned isolate, meditate, create earlier, Free Write Friday is more of a heady analytical space where we're writing um, based on prompts that have to do more with structure and characters and plot points and things like that, um, which is all valid. And we certainly need to be in a heady space to some degree when we're creating our solo shows. But Isolate, Meditate, Create is really meant to be um, more of a heart space driven writing prompt um, experience and get us into our subconscious mind and see what's there that wants to come out and be part of the story. So I would definitely encourage you to go onto my YouTube channel and do a blend of Free Write Friday and Isolate, Meditate, Create. Um, it's all free and it will really help you create the content of your solo show from different aspects of yourself from head and heart space. Okay, on with Free Write Friday. So today 
um, we are going to be exploring the exposition of your solo show, the exposition of your solo show. So many of you are probably familiar with the concept of exposition in novels or, you know, ensemble plays or things like that. Um, but with regard to our solo show, this can be really tricky. Um, a lot of times there's way too much of it or there's not nearly enough of it. And it's kind of like making a sauce, you know, really figuring out what is just the right balance of exposition. What does the audience have to know for the story to be meaningful to them? So I'm just going to kind of talk through that with you and give you some pointers and tips, and then we'll practice writing some exposition. Um, for those of you who maybe aren't as familiar with the concept of exposition, it's explanation. It's explanatory descriptive writing in the script um, that is conveying uh, the when, the where, the who of our solo shows. Um, a lot of times it also includes the backstory of the protagonist or other characters. It defines relationships. Um, you know, is this a parent-child relationship, friends, enemies, frenemies, teacher, students, strangers, lovers? Like what is the relationship of the characters that we're meeting? Again, just expositional details to make sure that the audience is with you. Um, I want to say beware of your wallpaper. I call it your wallpaper because it's the stuff that you just take for granted in your life. You walk right past it and you don't even notice it because it's your, it's your world. It's your norm. But then when you invite people into your world in your solo show, um, they need to be filled in on that wallpaper. So I'll give you a tangible example. When I was writing my second solo show Z, um, which was inspired by my own journey as a queer woman in, um, fundamentalist Christian culture in the Midwest. You know, I grew up in the Bible Belt. When I was writing that show, the writing group I was part of was, uh, let's see, there was a Jewish person, a, a non-religious kind of secular person, more of a mystic, and nobody really came from the Bible Belt or that type of Christianity. So um, I was using a lot of vernacular and saying things that I took much for granted because I grew up in that culture. And they were quite lost with several aspects of it. So it was such a gift to be in that writing environment with other solo artists and have them ask me more questions and have them ask me to explain certain concepts and things like that. So think about in your own life, your own culture, if you will, um, your own experience. What are those things that maybe you take for granted that you just, you, you just think everybody's going to know, but they don't know? Um, and that's where not working alone in isolation or in your creative cave by yourself all the time is really important. Being a part of creative groups, being a part of community that will um, lovingly and constructively tell you where those blind spots are and where that wallpaper is, is so essential, especially again with your exposition. So you make sure you're explaining just enough that the audience needs to know while maintaining that sense of authenticity, uh, the culture and the world that you come from. Um, and we always want to make sure that the exposition is entertaining as well. So you can infuse things. Um, actually, let me not get ahead of myself. We want to make sure that it's entertaining, but also we want to make sure that it's succinct. And again, that's, <clears throat> that's figuring out um, how much is too much and how much is not enough by being witnessed with other people who are reading your work, who are in the creative process with you. With that said, Allow yourself to be long-winded with your first draft. Allow yourself to give way too many details with your first draft. You have to even figure out what, what is it that you're trying to say? What are all of those details? And then in your second pass, you can put on your editor's hat and you can start to go in and decide what do they really need to know? What is actually crucial and what is just precious to us that maybe we actually don't need to share from stage. We just needed to get it out on the page originally. Um, and remember also that exposition does not need to come all at once, nor should it. If we give too much expositional information right at the very beginning of the show, the audience just gets overwhelmed. It's way too many facts and people and relationships and things like that that they have to keep track of, and it's too much. So just naturally allow the exposition to unfold as the story calls for it. It can be something that is sprinkled all throughout. A lot of times we think exposition just at the top of the story. No, it can be sprinkled out through the whole script, and it should be so that it's in bite sized pieces that your audience can track with and follow along. So back to keeping it entertaining. 
Um, I'm a huge fan of utilizing humor to give ex, uh, expositional details, um, playing with personification. So you can embody an inanimate object or an internal feeling or a side of self, um, an animal, and get really creative with who is giving the exposition to bring that um, humor or entertainment value to it. You can utilize your other talents like poetry, or if you're a singer songwriter, using that sort of skill set um, to give exposition. Um, and also really incorporating all of your senses so that your exposition is quite vivid. Um, you know, what are the, the sights and sounds and smells? What are the textures that you touched? Like being as specific as you can. And sometimes that's where multimedia can come in. So rather than talking about the sound of children laughing on the playground, you bring in a sound cue and you cut that line and instead you move the plot forward with the lines that remain. Um, or you put up an image of a beautiful beach and we see the ocean and we see the clouds and we see the sun and we see all of those things on the image behind you on the projection screen rather than you spending three sentences explaining how beautiful the beach is. So those are options too that can get exposition across um, showing versus telling, making it a little more active. Um, and something, if you're writing a narrator style solo show, we did a, a video of Free Write Friday about narrators. So go back and watch that if you haven't seen it yet. But um, if you are writing a narrator style solo show, meaning that either you are the narrator and you're telling your story, or you have some other sort of fantasy character or historical figure telling the story, I, I would invite you to create narrator sandwiches. And so what that is, is your intro which is that that's where you're setting it up. You're giving that exposition. You know, mom and dad met with me at the restaurant to have an important conversation. So we know we're at a restaurant. We know mom and dad are there with you and we know an important conversation is coming. Great, that's all we really need narrator to say. We plop into the scene. You as the solo artist are playing all of those characters. And that's where the meat of the scene happens. And then the other part of the sandwich is the outro. So now we're leaving the scene, narrator picks back up again with, yeah, so that really changed my opinion about my parents. I guess their marriage wasn't so happy. They're getting a divorce. And you have your outro, which moves the plot forward. So it's kind of like a sandwich, your intro, your scene or monologue, and your outro. So that's something to bear in mind too when giving exposition that 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 can help you show versus tell where the bulk of it is happening in the scene. Okay, and if your show does not have a narrator, if it's like Fertile um, by Heather Dowling, which I've mentioned multiple times in Free Write Friday, there's no narrator. The fourth wall is up the entire time. We're just watching a series of monologues and scenes throughout this solo show, um, if, or Worth It by Carla Delaney. There's no narrator. The fourth wall, again, is up. So. Um, how do we get that expositional information across if we don't have a narrator telling us what's happening? We have to be a little more clever about it. So write out that exposition, the who, the where, the when, all those things, and then figure out how can you naturally plug that in throughout the scene? How can, con how can conversations come across naturally and authentically between the, the characters that tell us kind of what year it is, where it's taking place, what the central conflict is, those sorts of things. Um, so that one's a little more challenging because you don't have the narrator just telling us outright, um, but it can certainly still be done where exposition is planted through the characters in the solo show. Okay, so that is a little bit about exposition with regard to a solo show. I'd love for you to um, have a chance to now kind of write about some exposition. So first I want you to think of an impactful moment in your life. It can be an impactful moment from any point in your life, just something that changed you in some way, shape or form or was meaningful to you in some way, shape or form. So just think of that moment. It could be good, it could be bad, anything in between. I want you to think of that. And then I'm going to give you three minutes and I just want you to free write as uncensored as you can. Again, remember, we're not sharing anything in this setting, so you can just be as uncensored as you want to be. And I want you to, for, to write for three minutes in as much expositional detail as you can about that memory. So again, thinking about who was there, who was there with you, or was there no one there at all? Where did it take place? And be specific, what city, what state, what country, um, what was the building, or was it outdoors? Like, be as specific as you can. What year did it take place? How old were you? Um, all those sorts of things. And again, infuse your senses. What were the smells, sights, sounds, things you touched, all those things. So I'm going to give you three minutes. I want you to just write uncensored 
um, about that particular incident and moment in your life. And again, just be expositional and give as many details as you can. And I'll tell you when your time is up. Okay, great. So go ahead and wrap that up. <clears throat> Part two, um, we are going to focusing on that exact same moment and on the piece that you just wrote, we're taking now a second pass at that piece. So some things as you look at this again, that I want you to think about, and this time you're going to have five minutes, you'll have a little bit more time to go a little more in depth. I want you to already be thinking, okay, have I shared too much? Now that I'm taking another look at it, is there some stuff that I just mentioned that is not important? Um, or have I not gone far enough? Is there some stuff that I left out that is now I'm remembering it and I need to add in? Um, and also be thinking about writing down little ideas about how can you theatricalize this? How can you show versus tell? Did you write about sounds you heard that could become sound design or um, you know, images you describe that could instead become projections, or are you talking about what somebody said to you, and maybe that's a character line or a monologue. So again, just take another pass at the same piece and just do another draft of it, allowing yourself to make those edits, make those add-ons if need be, or consider those types of theatricalization that you could apply. Okay, I will let you know when your five minutes are up.
Okay, great. Well, go ahead and wrap up your writing. And <clears throat> as I always say, if you were writing in a journal or on scrap paper or something like that, I encourage you to transcribe it. Um, into a document on your computer. I love Google Docs, that's what I work in. Um, it's just something that will start to put it in a safe place so you can really start to accumulate these pieces and create your solo show script. Um, you'll see if you look in the chat, I put uh, quite a few announcements. Um, so feel free to scope those out. I'm also gonna guide you through them in just a moment. But the last thing I, I, I wanna say with regard to exposition, I mean, hopefully this, this was easy um, and helpful to start to wrap your brain around how exposition needs to look in a solo show versus any other type of um, piece of theater and giving our audience enough information so that they're grounded, but not so much information that they're bored. Because I think we've all seen those solo shows where somebody will turn into a character and we're like, who? Who are they? Like, who are they playing? Or they'll give some traumatic event that happened to them, but they don't tell us how old they were when it took place. And we're like, well, that would be quite different if you were five versus if you were 50. So um, those types of things. So just really getting grounded in the exposition with our audience um, so that they know the impact that every story and every moment is supposed to have is so important. Okay, so uh, go ahead and, and look at the different announcements. Um, my free class, The Art of Creating the One Person Play is happening Saturday, September 25th on Zoom at 10 a.m. Pacific time, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, just go to soaringsolostudios.com under, you can either find it under free stuff or events and free class um, and just RSVP there and you'll get the Zoom link sent to you. Um, and you don't have to have any experience to attend class and you don't have to bring any writing, although you're welcome to if you did write a solo theater piece here or somewhere else that you wanna share and get some feedback on. Um, but every class I do give you a writing prompt. So you'll, you'll leave with some new content for sure. And if you wanted to work with me in a more professional capacity, and again, there's no pressure with this, you can always just attend my free events. But if you did want to do um, a more, a professional session with me, you are welcome to contact me for um, information about an initial consultation, um, power pair groups where you're paired with another solo artist and myself. So you're getting some outside eyes on your piece, as well as the small group sessions that I lead, which are kind of like solo theater artist writers rooms. Those are great to, again, to just see where our blind spots are. Also hear what we're doing well and right when we need encouragement. Um, so feel free to email me at soaringsoloartist at gmail.com for more information about the different offerings and all of that. And then um, if you're wanting to put a meaningful stake in the ground, if you've been with me for any amount of time, you know I'm always talking about putting a meaningful stake in the ground for your solo show to motivate and inspire and encourage you to move things forward. Um, I will be launching the Revealed series next month in September which is a virtual reading series. Um, so it's basically works in progress of solo shows um, that the artist will be reading their script aloud and to a virtual audience. And then after that's done, we'll spend a portion of time going through a Q and A, um, having open discussion about the script. And that's where we can really find out um, how is the script landing on a virtual audience. And that is so very important in the creative process um, before we commit it to memory, before we commit it to the stage and all the technical bells and whistles to have some sort of a reading and especially a virtual reading where you can reach audiences everywhere. So um, I'm gonna be hosting that. If you're interested in finding out more information about Revealed, again, just email me and we can talk about it and see where you're at in your process and if you might be ready. So it's going from September through April of 2022. So even if you're like, ah, I'm definitely not ready for September, but maybe April is doable, let me know um, and we can talk about that. Um, I told you about Isolate, Meditate, Create earlier, but again, all those episodes are on my website and that just utilizes meditation and visualization to get to the heart of your story. There are about 120 episodes of that, I believe. Um, so feel free to find those on my YouTube channel, Soaring Solo LLC on YouTube. Um, and again, the next free Write Friday, if you enjoy today, want to come back, that's happening Friday, September 10th, 10 a.m. Pacific, noon Central, and 1 p.m. Eastern, RSVP the exact same way you did today on my website, and you'll get your uh, link sent to you in an email. Um, Fringe Festival, the Hollywood Fringe Festival is wrapping up here this weekend. Um, so if you haven't seen shows or if you have been seeing shows and you want to catch some more, 
um, please tune in and watch the soaring solo shows that are still happening this weekend in the Hollywood Fringe Festival. There was a total of 14 shows. I'm not sure how many still have their final performance over the weekend, but tune in. You can go on my website under events and upcoming solo shows, and you'll see the whole roster of upcoming solo shows, even into the fall, because right after Hollywood Fringe, we go into Binge Fringe Festival over at the Santa Monica Playhouse. Um, and these shows are streaming and they are also in person. So if you're in the Hollywood area or close enough to drive, come see it in person. There are safety protocols in place. Um, I believe they are requiring uh, masks as well as um, either a negative COVID test within 72 hours or a vaccine card to see the shows in person. Otherwise you can just stream them from the comfort of your home and not worry about any of that. Um, and lastly, uh, Barbara Brownell, who is a Soaring Solo community member and just a beautiful performer. You may have seen her in Mad Men and many other TV shows. She's been acting for quite some time at, on a very professional level and on Broadway. Um, her one woman show, Finding My Light, is happening this weekend. I believe it is only in person. However, she said she's recording it. So if you buy a ticket, she will send you the link afterward of the recording. Um, that is happening at the group rep in North Hollywood on August 28th. So tomorrow. <laughs> um, yeah, so Barbara's doing that. It is a fundraiser for the group rep. And um, it is just about how Barbara has continued to find her light and her love in this world, despite a lot of the traumas she's been through and, and infuses dance and characters and um, singing. And um, she's a brilliant performer. So I would definitely encourage you to see that. I think that's everything. I will leave the chat up for a little bit if you wanna to continue to say hi to one another or jot down um, the different announcements that I talked about. And again, if you have any questions or anything you wanna go over with me, just email me at soaringsoloartist at gmail.com. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.